police attitudes to the investigation, to the rule of law, and life itself have been casualized. Why bother spending months digging for evidence when you can settle the case with a bullet, right? Public respect for laws and courts has diminished. Even the police is obeyed only because of the fear it has in your eyes. And for India, there will be certain and serious inexorable consequences. The public cheers such extrajudicial killing or should I put it simply as encounters. Lacking witnesses, prosecution after prosecution collapses and the accused walking free every time. And this sight of an accused walking free antagonizes the masses so much. So much that they have started demanding these extrajudicial killing. And this proved to be a dangerous proposition. I'm not feeling bad for the history cheaters being eliminated by the UP police, but for those innocent police, uh, innocent people who police catch and turn into scapegoats every now and then. Police history of fabrication of false evidences and trapping poor innocent people into an alleged crime is quite old. A man was booked for attempt to murder and was put on trial for next six years. Later, the court finally let the man walk free because of lack of evidences and according to the provisions of CRPC. This public demand of extrajudicial killing or encounter is giving the police a weapon it is most likely to misuse. Can you forget what people did, what police did to the Talwar family in Arushi Talwar murder case? A couple of years back, a school bus conductor in Gurgaon was arrested for raping and killing a seven-year-old boy. And police even made that poor guy confess to his alleged crime that he didn't commit. And suddenly, people started demanding an easy way out. You know, like an encounter. Had police killed that poor guy in a singham style encounter, we would have turned the police into heroes. But sanity struck the government and government ordered a CBI probe into the case. And CBI found out that the, lay, that the real culprit wasn't the poor conductor, but a school senior student who killed the innocent child to postpone the exams. We took no time in hailing this case at par Vindir Bhya. Last year, millions of us had applauded the killing of four men alleged to have raped and murdered Priyanka Reddy. The police claims in the encounter story barely aspires to narrative credibility and leaders across the political spectrum joined in to the demand of an encounter. Now what if one of those accused wasn't involved in the crime? I'm not against killing the culprit, I'm against killing an accused whose crime is not yet, not yet, not yet established. I cannot trust the police. Encounter provides an easy way out to the police. To the police. But what about the masses? Why do public demand such a thing? This is because of the slow, tedious and in judicial process and injustice that take year to try the case and eventually find out that the powerful accused is innocent because of the money and resources he had. A recent encounter of a bastard named Vikas Dubey has rung the bell of judicial system again. Though I enjoyed the news of killing, of his killing, as he was probably the most notorious gangster along with Raja Bhaiya, Atik Hamid, and the kinds. These people turned the legal system into their own courtier. All the police officers danced to their tunes. I support the killing of these hardened criminals. But, but, here I cannot support the police at all. How can I support the police that's raised these bastards that did not muster up evidences to punish a, people like him in the court of law for all the murders and kidnappings these stupid guys and bastards did so far. Law failed the victims and us and that's why people demand such encounters. But here one thing needs to be kept in mind that what if Dubey was killed on the reckoning of the people who he worked for? Because here, the police is the same as it was years ago. Just a change of political master cannot turn them into patriots. Another thing is that police can use these fake encounters to kill more and perhaps innocent people without going into trial at all. You know, that makes them famous these days. Extrajudicial executions and torture aren't new in India. But these are the first time that they have been publicly applauded. That morning, 
might well mark a time India decided to stop wasting and time and money pretending to be a republic and transformed itself from the world's largest democracy into world's greatest next light kangaroo court. Let's accept this. For decades, extrajudicial executions have formed the bedrock of Indian criminal justice system. It has been a response to public frustration over the state's inability to enforce order. From the mid-1960s, police forces in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh began shooting dacoits in response to massacres and looting. Hideous crimes that had none of the nostalgic romance now wasted in them by Hindi pop cinema. 500 dacoits were reputed to have been killed in the operations. Contemporary newspaper accounts were suffused with stories of extrajudicial killing and torture. In Maharashtra, then police commissioner Julio Ribeiro has often been alleged to have presided over the murder of organized crime suspects, beginning with the cold blooded murder of Mania Survey in 1983. Uh, they got a movie on him, uh, just starring Johnny Bryan. An estimated 500 men with alleged link to crime syndicate and terrorism were simply shot dead. And probably on the instance of some other opposite dawn. The encounter policy was not only questioned at that time, it was warmly welcomed as a necessary step in breaking the back of the underworld. Shiddharth Shankar Ray, West Bengal's former chief minister, is reputed to have presided over the torture and killing of hundreds of Maoists aided by the state's communists. There are graphic accounts of how over a hundred, mil, a hundred young and next lights were killed by the Congress and the CPM together at uh, West Bengal, in West Bengal. And the dead bodies were tarred over and thrown into Ganges. The Indian elephant is slow, generally pacific, but when panicked, it is a savage, indiscriminate killer. It's generally forgotten that former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi ordered the Air Force to bomb Aizwal in 1966 using air power against our own people for no fault of theirs. Assam Chief Secretary recorded on papers how the villages of Darzo, Darzo, uh, I think Darzo, were relocated and the hamlet was set on fire and elders ordered to certify that, quote unquote, they had burned down their own village. For obvious, for obvious reasons, there is no certain way of telling just how common extrajudicial killings by the police actually are. There is no national database of the mandatory inquiry by magistrates into all such cases. Few cases, moreover, are investigated. Just six cases relating to extrajudicial executions were registered in 2017. This, however, we do know that having fallen for several years from 2010, civilian deaths in police actions have surged from just 40 in 2014 to 700 in 2017. In 2017, Haryana registered an astonishing 431 killings of civilians by police in what are described as other incidents. Other incidents is a term that a National Crime Record Bureau uses to distinguish these, these deaths from those from a clear cause like accidentally during police operation or shootout with terrorists or armed criminals. This single category, the other category from Haryana made up over 55% of all killings by the police in 2017. Uttar Pradesh had just 88, came close in second. The numbers are significantly higher in numbers populated adjusted terms. But these rate of killings is still relatively low. Police forces in the United States and Mexico, among others, have much greater figure in terms of percentage. The fact is that this involves cold-blooded murder, the act we would like to think criminal, not nation states indulge in. Like everything else, this savagery has a context. From the front lines of India's insurgencies, historic like these emerges all the time. Like Farooq Ahmed Dar, known on the streets of Srinagar as Bitta Karate, who lives a quiet life in Srinagar after bragging that he executed Kashmiri Pandits and Air Force officers. He lives happily 
in Kashmir. Hundreds of people showed up at his wedding in 2011. Molana Masood Azhar, the chief of Jashi Muhammad, spent years in Indian jails without being convicted of anything. Following Azhar's release in the Indian Airlines hostage for prisoner swap at Kandhar, convened by Ajit Dawal, and the surge of pan India terrorism started from, 20, uh, from 2002. Security services now operates a take no Pakistani prison policy. A policy that infamously was to take the life of alleged Lashkar Taiba recruit Ishrat Jahan in Gujarat. There is no evidence though that Gujarat police was specially fond of these policies of encounter. In 2004, the year Ishrat Jahan was killed, there were 354 civilian killings in police firing. The highest number came from Andhra Pradesh with 85, Jammu Kashmir followed with 50. Uttar Pradesh with 42, Gujarat had just 5. It seems BJP is not fond of extrajudicial killings. It seems so. Except in Haryana. They are brutal in Haryana. From time to time, courts have stepped in to contain police killings. But there has been no institutional introspection, let alone reforms. Each one of us knows precisely what is going on. But why does these extrajudicial killings are so popular? The answer is simple. The encounter killing remains a valuable tool for the government, a quick fix for their inability to build a modern nation state governed by institutions and the rule of law. Police force simply don't have the numbers, resources, skills, technology needed to bring about prosecution, but the public demands order. The encounter killing offers at the least of the fulcrum of it. For all the talk of making India safer, the data tell us what government promise have been worth. Bureau of Police Research and Development shows that there should be 192 police officer over 1 lakh of India's 1.287 billion population. The problem is there are not that many cops because police hiring has lagged and bogged down by budget constraints. India actually has 150 police officers per 1 lakh population. Uttar Pradesh should have 185 police officers per 1 lakh, but it has 127. Telangana should have one, uh, 218, 218, but it has just 131. In 2017, according to the Bureau of Public uh, Police Research and Development Statistics, India's state and union territories together spent 1 lakh crore rupees on police forces. Just 1.39% of GDP. In no other states besides Tamil Nadu, Telangana and Delhi did spending on police constitute more than 2% of the budget. That's not even counting the quality. In 2016 and 17, just 44,000 police personnel across the country received any form of in-service training. 0.03% of national police force. Most of the police investigating officers don't even know the basic forensic knowledge. And they either end up destroying evidences or bodged up the investigation itself. No one ought to be surprised either. The problem is that the trial of alleged rapists are not being conducted faster because of or that conviction rate haven't increased despite new laws. The criminal justice system has simply disintegrated. The consequences are also there for us to see. Police attitudes to investigation, to the rule of law and life itself have been casualized. Why bother spending months digging for evidences when you can settle down the case with a bullet and earn public applause? People, public respect for laws and courts has diminished. Even the police is obeyed only because of the fear. For India, there will be a certain and inexorable consequences. From the traffic lights we refuse to stop at, to the parking disputes that end up with gunfire, to mob violences over electricity or water. Each of these is a symptom of the same malaise we are uploading for Hyderabad police and UP police nowadays. For eliminating a bastard, Another reason why we applaud the elimination of these hardcore criminals is that we have clearly discussed that we, what we have clearly discussed above.
the judicial delay in their conviction had dube convicted earlier for his crimes he would he would not probably become what he became this fault line lies with the political masters senior officers and even advocates for their incompetence to bring up these people to the courts sometimes the police behaves like a communist kangaroo court that becomes the judge jury and the executioner itself popular will is not the foundation of a republic it's the law that we are losing india deserves better